Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. My name is Jacob and in this video, we're going to continue our series on making API requests inside of Bubble. In particular, we're going to look at OpenAI. We're going to learn a little bit more about different authentication methods. We started talking about authentication in the context of APIs in the last video. So if you missed that last video, make sure to go back and watch it. And we're also in this video going to talk about making post requests and sending data in the body of a post request, which is definitely a handy skill that you'll you'll need to know when making your own API requests, depending on the API you're using. So if that sounds good, if you're enjoying the series, if you enjoy the content that I put out here, make sure to like and subscribe and do all of those things that YouTube wants you to do to show support of this video. And let's get started. I'm on the OpenAI website right now. If you've never heard of OpenAI, it is a company that makes AI and it tells you um, what this API provides here. So OpenAI's API provides access to GPT-3, which performs a wide variety of natural language tasks and codecs, which translates natural language to code. But before we dive into the documentation, I want to really kind of hammer home a point that I, I brought up in the last video which is as we're going through and looking at this documentation and and talking about how to authenticate or how to send data in a in the body of a post request in this example um, i want you to try to don't try to memorize everything instead try to focus on the underlying concepts that we're discussing because in reality when you're out in the wild um, integrating with whatever apis you're trying to integrate with that documentation is going to look different. Things are going to be expressed in a, in a different way. And if you try to just memorize where every, every key needs to be or whatever it is, it will be a little bit trickier, right? Instead, if you understand the, the kind of underlying fundamental concepts of, of making API requests that we're, we're discussing here in the series, that is what's going to help you when you are out looking at different documentation, whatever the API is that you're looking at. Okay, so you'll probably, uh, that's my spiel, you'll probably hear me bring it up again, uh, at least one more time in this series, but really important. So let's, let's start looking at this. Now, what I did here when I first landed on OpenAI and I was, I was trying to understand what I could do with this API is I looked at the examples here. I actually have this already open. Let's go to this tab here. And you can do some really cool stuff. And what's what's interesting about this API is just how open-ended it is. So the way that it works is, um, let's look at like movie to emoji, for example. The way it works is we make a request and we send a prompt to this AI model. In this case, you can see it says convert movie titles into emoji. And in this prompt, you can see some examples are given. So back to the future, has these emojis, Batman has these emojis. And the task of this AI is to return a response, return some emojis for Star Wars in this case. And this is the sample response that's returned here. Now, if we keep scrolling down with any of these examples here, you can see that there is an example of what an API request looks like here, All right? So let's go back to that movie to emoji and we can see that if we make this API request, we don't see the response in JSON format, but we, we see that this is what we could expect back. Now, what are we looking at here? We haven't really seen this yet. What are we looking at here? We're looking at a request made in curl. Now, what is curl? If you don't know what curl is, if you don't know what anything is what, that we're talking about here, a good practice is to always go to Google and search for it. One of the first articles that comes up if you do type in what is curl is this article here from IBM. Curl, which stands for client URL, is a command line tool that developers use to transfer data to and from a server, right? At the most fundamental, curl lets you talk to a server by specifying the location in the form of a URL and the data you want to send. So it's another way that we can make API requests, right? And why are we talking about curl? Well, it's you're, when you're reading through API documentation, very often you'll see example requests in curl here. And what's great about this is they really provide, looking at this, provides a lot of clues about different parts of the request 
that we can then take over to Bubble's API connector. And actually, I'll show you a trick at the end that's, that's really neat that will save you a lot of time. But looking at this, it provides a lot of clues about what data we need to include in our request inside of the API connector. Looking at Stripe's documentation here, you can see, again, this is, you know, we're in the middle of, of Stripe's documentation here, but this create a charge endpoint, if we look on the right here, we also see an example of a curl request, right? Looking at Facebook's documentation, we see a curl request here, right? And a an sample response. So a lot of the time, what, what I like to do is if, if I can, I'll look at an example of a curl request and it will provide a lot of different clues about what I need to send. So let's go back here and let's kind of look at what's happening inside of this request. We see up here an endpoint that we can make a request to going back to this, what is curl, right? Curl lets you talk to a server by specifying the location that we want to send the request to. So that's what this is right here in this example. This is our endpoint. And we also see different parts of a request. Now this dash H will actually, this actually stands for an HTTP header. If you didn't know that, what could you do? Well, you can go to Google, you can type in what is dash H in curl and Google will give you the nice answer here. What is an HTTP request? I don't know, let's go to Google or an HTTP header, sorry. An HTTP header is a field of an HTTP request or response that passes additional context and metadata about the request or response. That's a really nice definition here. And the important part to understand is that we can include HTTP headers inside of our request. And when you're looking at an example curl request here, that's what this dash H stands for. So if you see dash H and then this key content type and the value of application JSON, this is an example of a header and this is what the key would be and the value. Again, we're always dealing with keys and values here when we're talking about HTTP headers. Another one here, now this might be a clue um, when it comes to authentication, is we have this key called authorization. Then we have this word bearer here and open API, open AI API key. Okay, that might be a hint about how we need to authenticate when making requests to open AI. Then here we have this dash D and this is going to be data that will include, this is like the body of our request. Okay. So we're going to include this data when we make a request. Okay. So let's get out of this for a second and let's go to the documentation here. And we could, if we wanted to go through and read um, all about, you know, whatever endpoints they have here. If we click on authentication, so let's read this and see what they say. The OpenAI API uses API keys for authentication. Visit your API keys page to retrieve the API key. Okay, this is similar to what we saw when we looked at Spoonacular over here in the last video. Remember that your API key is secret, okay. All API requests should include your API key in an authorization HTTP header as follows authorization bearer, your API key. Now sending a bearer token here is a really common form of authentication that you'll see with, with different APIs. We're going to send an authorization key as an HTTP header with the value bearer and then whatever your token is here. It's just a method that you'll see over and over again, right? You can also provide the key as a password in HTTP basic authentication um, let's not talk about this right now, but this is just another way that we can authenticate if we wanted to. But why don't we start by just doing what they say here, and that's including this authorization header. So let's go back to the examples. And what we'll do is we'll scroll to the bottom here and we'll send a request to get back some interview questions. So create a list of eight questions for my interview with a science fiction author is the prompt here. And the sample response, this AI is giving us back some questions that look like that. Now we can look at this API request and inside of this data that we're sending here, you can see this prompt keyword here, 
This just looks like JSON, by the way, right? We can see this prompt, and there it is. Create a list of eight questions for my interview with a science fiction author. So that's where we include data about what prompt we want to send to OpenAI. Okay, so let's go back over to Bubble, and let's start typing this in. We're going to go to the API connector. We'll add another API here. Let's call this OpenAI. Let's leave authentication as none or self-handled for now. And we'll start setting up our first request. So this one will be get interview questions. Okay. Now, if we look at this example here, there's no information actually about the what type of request this is. Typically in curl, um, if we look at like Facebook's documentation, for example, this dash X here will tell you information about what method it is. Um, but if we were to look through the documentation, I think that we would see that we can make a, a post that this is going to be a post request. Um, we'll look at another way that we would know that after. But um, if all else fails, you can just try to make a post request, right? And typically when we're including data in the body of a request like this, we're going to make a post request. So that's another hint about what method you're going to, what method you're going to use here. So let's go back to the API connector. We'll change this from get to post. And I'm going to copy this endpoint right here. OK. Now, again, as we said, we need to attach some headers here. So. The first one will say content type application slash JSON. So let's add a header to this call. The next one is authorization. And this is how we're going to, of course, authenticate. So we need to say bearer and then get our open API or open AI API key. So we'll type in bearer. And let's go over to, I've of course already set up an account here. So we'll go personal view API keys. Let's reveal this API key. And that's what I will attach here. Awesome. So it looks good. The way the API connector works is Bubble's going to take what we've, what keys and values we've put inside of this header section here and attach these as HTTP headers when we initialize this call and make this request. These don't need to be dynamic. We don't need to expose these to the user, of course. So we're going to leave these as private. And now this is where we haven't looked at this yet, but this is where we can include um, the data that we can send inside of the body of our request right here, right? So body, it's a JSON object. We'll talk about this uh, dyna these dynamic values in a second here. But to start, why don't we go back to the documentation Look at this example, and let's just copy this entire JSON object here. Okay, now you can see that this body type is set to JSON right now. We also have some other options right here. In this case, we won't talk about this right now. Let's. We know that we have to send JSON here, and we know that just looking at at this, right? We've seen this before. This looks like JSON. So let's copy this and paste it into the body of our request right here. Now, most of this we won't have to change, but what we will want to change if we were actually building out this application is the prompt here, right? Now, let's, before we begin, one thing that I like to do whenever I'm integrating with new APIs is to just hard code everything. So I'm not actually going to change this right now. Let's just initialize this call and see if we can get a response to know if we're on the right track. So let's click initialize call. Bubble's going to make an API request, and there we go. Getting back a screen like this is always, not always, but most of the time, like we've said before, a good sign. And we can see that we get this choices key, which is an array, and it looks like these are the questions right here. 
And it looks like one of the challenging things about this response is that we'll have to go through if we wanted to, you know, like save each one of these questions that's returned to us as a list or put them inside of a repeating group or something like that, we'd have to go through and take this text and kind of parse out all of these different questions. And it looks like the number eight that was returned to us got kind of cut off. So anyways, um, let's not worry too much about parsing through the text because what I'm more concerned about in this video, we'll see what we can do at the end, but what I'm more concerned about in this video is API calls, obviously. But let's click on save and now let's try to make this a little bit more dynamic here. Okay, so maybe what we could do, if we look at this prompt, is we could change the number eight here to be dynamic so that we can generate as many questions as we want or as our user wants to. And then we can also make this part dynamic too so that we're not generating questions for a science fiction author every single time, but whatever profession, let's say, uh, we wanna generate interview questions for. Okay, so the way that this works is is very similar to the way that dynamic or th that we looked at making our dynamic or sorry the way that this works is very similar to what we did up here in a previous video when we made our parts of our call dynamic in particular we were looking at dynamic parameters now we're just looking at parts of the the body uh, that are dynamic as well and you can see bubble gives you a hint here to use these little angle brackets i think they're called i don't know <laughs> but uh to make for dynamic values so what i'm going to do is we're going to say create a list of and we're going to give a key name here so we'll say number of questions this can be whatever we want right but let's make this not private and we'll say five just to initialize this call and questions for my interview with a let's make this dynamic too we'll say profession We'll uncheck private here. The reason we're unchecking private again is so that we can actually um, expose this option and give our users the chance to, to fill in what they want to ask questions about here. So the profession, let's just say, is a police officer for now. And let's reinitialize this call. Again, we're putting in values here right now just so that we can reinitialize the call and actually get a response back. And once that works, we know that we're on the right track. So let's see what came back to us. We'll look at the raw data here. We have five questions, it looks like. Good. So we know that we're only getting five back. What inspired you to become a police officer? What do you think are the most important qualities for a successful police officer? So I was trying to look to see if like this AI is actually giving us back anything that is... Uh, that, that's interesting. This part right here, I think is interesting. What do you think is the most important thing police officers can do to prevent crime? So they're associating crime with being a police officer. Every other question so far, you can just kind of sub in that word. And um, yeah, so that that part's pretty interesting. But anyways, we're learning about uh, how to integrate with OpenAI's API, not how to actually create an API, or sorry, to create an AI. So Let's save that, and that is an example of making a putting information in the body of our request first of all, and then and then making parts of that dynamic. Okay, so I want to show you one quick little hack here too that will save you a lot of time. What we're going to do is I'm going to if we scroll down to the bottom here, you can see where it says import another call from curl. Let's actually just delete everything that we did. So here we have OpenAI, we have authentication up here, and you can see import another call from curl. And what we can actually do is if you are on a on a site or looking at documentation that has example an example curl request, we can actually copy this request. We can go into here and paste that. And Bubble, Bubble's API connector will set up that entire request for us, which is Pretty cool, right? It will save you a lot of time from having to type things out. But I would recommend while you're learning this stuff, especially when you're getting into the habit of typing out JSON, to take the time and actually just practice writing it out yourself. 
But anyways, a nice little trick there. Now, again, we talked in the last video about different ways of being able to authenticate, right? Just because this is an example where you don't have to put your authorization header inside of this header section for this initial, for this call right here. Same with content type with the value of application slash JSON, right? We might want to take these up here and put them as shared headers for all calls. So why don't I delete these two? And let's try adding shared headers, all calls. Go to the API key again. Um, let's make this dynamic. We'll say five and police officer. And let's see if adding these shared headers works. And looks like we get basically the same response, right? So we can add shared headers. And if we were adding other, um, other API calls, those shared headers would be sent with every single call that we're making, right? We can also, if we wanted to, uh, we could click on authentication here and we can add a private key in the header which will expose this development key value. Now, in this case, I think open, open AI just gives us one key or it doesn't, doesn't differentiate between um, dev and live environments. We could create new secret keys, but anyways, this often is a nice option to have when we want to, to have a development key or when we do have a development key, I should say. But anyways, we can take this authorization header here and paste in our bearer code, if we reinitialize this call, we should get the exact same response. So my point in showing you this, of course, is that there are a number of different ways to set up our call to actually get a response here like this. Looks like we're getting back the exact same question. So it looks like maybe, um, I mean, we can try some different, different professions to trip up this AI but it looks like it's, it's pretty set on what questions it would want to ask a police officer um, in an interview. Okay, so the last thing I want to do in this video is to talk about how we could take this response that we're getting and try to parse through this text field here so that we can um, you know, get one of these questions and kind of, kind of isolate each question and deal with them as a list of questions rather than this one text that's all kind of jumbled together. You can see right now we have these dash ends here, which stands for new line. Um, but let's see what we can do. So I'm going to go to the design tab here. We'll take a repeating group and put it on the page. And let's say that the type of content of this repeating group is going to be a text so that in each cell we'll have a single text. Now the data source, what we'll do is we will leave this call that we've set up here uh, for OpenAI curl call, let's rename this. Whenever you import, um, whenever you import a curl request, it'll automatically create it with the name of curl call. So let's say get interview questions. There we go, and we'll leave this as a data call. So for the data source of this repeating group, we'll say get data from an external API. Now, if a, if any of the stuff that we're doing here is confusing to you. Um, make sure to go back and watch some of the early video, earlier videos that we did when we talked about how to bring in data from an API and actually use it inside of our app because we're not going to go through that again. Get data from an external API. The API provider is going to be OpenAI get interview questions. Let's just leave these parameters as they are. So five and police officer. And if we look at these fields that are returned to us, let's just go back and check what the response looks like. It looks like we have choices here. Choices is an array. And let's just assume right now we haven't, 
mean, I'm sure in the documentation, if we were to, we were to read through and, and, and look at what this AI is giving us back, it's API and AI, um, we could see why this is a list. I mean, presumably they might, they might give us a few different options here if we wanted that. But let's just assume right now that we're getting one, that there will always be one object returned to us inside of this choices array here. So what we'll do is we'll say that we want get interview questions, choices. We'll take the first item that's returned to us and we'll look at the text right here. Now, if we just leave this as is, why are we getting an error here? Because this evaluates to a text. We're dealing with a repeating group right now. So the data source, if we say the type of content is a text, we need to provide this repeating group with a data source that is a list of texts. So what can we do here? Looking at our text again here, looks like we have this dash n. And it looks like this dash n is just splitting we can we could split by this forward slash n right and i think that will separate each text into its own list item here so let's try to do that and see if it works we'll use split by if you don't know what split by is if you've never used it before a good place to always start is with the documentation so let's load that up and take a look and for some reason, this, this hashtag split by, I know it's supposed to scroll down to that part of the page, but it never seems to work when I load the page. Return the list of texts version of the original uh, string of text using the argument as a separator between the items. Using a line break separator will recognize each new line as a separate entry. That's interesting, actually. I don't know if, um, let's see if, if we can do that. So we'll say split by. And in this case, I mean, the text separator, we'll just type in this dash n here. And you can see now that this will take that original text, it's gonna split each, it's gonna split um, each item on this, or create a new list of text, and it's gonna look for this dash n to split each item. So let's now take a text element and just drop it in here. And let's see what comes up when we say current cells text. Let's get rid of the fixed number of rows too. And if we preview this, we're going to make that API request. Looks like it's loading right now. And it looks like nothing is coming back, which is always nice. So let's see what's going on here. I wonder if um, it's just automatically reading these new lines. Let's see if we can split by an actual new line like that and see what happens. Okay, so that actually looked like it worked, which was interesting, right? Um, and it looks like what's happening is these first two lines that are being split are just being split into empty array so or into sorry an, an empty an empty string so what if we did this again actually all i did by the way was i replaced what i thought was this dash n here with a new line because that's what that dash n is actually doing it's, it's indicating that there's a new line there so i literally just put hit enter and put a space in there and that's working, except we can see from these uh, from this example here that the first two entries are coming back blank. So why don't we just try this? We'll say split by, and we'll say items from number three and see if that works. And we'll know if it works because we'll see in cell one here, we should see that first question. So there's that request being made. There we go. Get five questions returned to us. Now, I think that this right here, this is just fixed, so that's getting, it's a fixed width, so that's getting cut off. But anyways, we could deal with that uh, 
by changing the fixed width to not being fixed width, and we would see all of that text there. So anyways, that's one way that we could approach dealing with a response like this. And this this will happen often where you'll you'll receive a response and you'll have to kind of parse through the data and, and reformat it in a way that makes a little bit more sense, right? If we wanted to save a list of questions now that's returned from this API to our database in a field that is a list of texts, we could do that by parsing through in the way that we just did. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.